What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another day at the garage. Uh, so I'm taking a break from the truck build, and I started working on a smoker. Uh, got here a little late to the party. I should have been recording this before, but I figured it better late than never. So I've had this for a while. The wife doesn't want me to work on the truck right now because it's taking too much time. And we're about to go camping, so I can't be bored out of my mind. So I figured let me build a smoker real quick out of all the stuff I got laying around the house. Uh, I went and priced some, and just really not what I want to spend right now. And as of now, I have nothing in this entire build. But first things first, this is going to be an offset smoker, and it's going to be reverse flow. So basically, what that means is the heat is not in the cooking chamber. So you've got a firebox here made out of an old propane tank. And then I've got an old air compressor tank sitting here. So what's gonna happen is the fire will be here. The heat and smoke will come into the cook chamber. The heat is not allowed to directly touch the meat or food, whatever's in here. So it's gonna come under this plate and it's got to come up through this spot here, the smoke and the heat. And then we'll evenly distribute across all the food and then we'll go out the discharge, out this side, out the exhaust. Uh, this is some four inch exhaust pipe I had off of an old diesel truck that I had behind the shed. And these, tabs here are the old shock mounts that I built for the truck um, the hinges here is just some round stock I had from a buddy of mine gave to me and then these are old uh, lug nuts off of the truck and then I got an old NGK spark plug I found in the dirt that will be the door stop to keep it from falling all the way back um, I've got some golf cart wheels I'm going to put on this thing to be able to move it around. Uh, I plan to have a wood handle here of some kind, um, just so it doesn't really get hot. And I don't know, if you make a metal handle, it's going to be pretty hot. So I also added a drain here. I repurposed this bung. I want to say it was like a two inch pipe thread, but I cut it out on that side for the exhaust. So I repurposed it over here and I kind of stole this pipe from work, but no one will miss it. So I'm going to add a ball valve here for the drain for all of the juices and whatnot, the grease. It'll fall back down this way. I'm going to end up probably angling this Right now it's pretty level, but I'll probably get this up just a little bit so everything will kind of just fall to this end and go to the drain so that way it's not settling back here or trying to run back into the firebox. This is what I've got to fill next. I'll probably get some sort of paper or cardboard template and then trace it in a metal. But uh, the trick is, at least from what I've seen online and on YouTube that you want the most amount of flow into the chamber. You want a clear smoke. All right, now that I got the legs thrown on there, I'm going to start working on one of these doors for the firebox. Um, this one here is gonna be a small door. Obviously, it'll be opening this way, but this will have a grate in it. Probably, oh, I don't know, about this level or so, maybe a little higher. 
but I'm going to use this access door to not only get the fire going and get it as much air as possible, but also I'm going to have a grate in here that I'm going to put like a tinfoil tray in full of water to keep all of, uh, get it, keep it almost like a steam going through there just to keep a nice cool smoke, um, keep the, the meat uh, nice and moist. So uh, I don't get no dry meat, but uh, yeah, I gotta cut this door. And then also I gotta cut this door out because this is where I'm gonna be sticking all the firewood in. Uh, this door is going to be a little different because it's a circle and I've got a cutoff wheel that makes straight lines. So this will be a fun one, but uh, I want the door to come all the way to the bottom so I can scrape ashes out and I don't have to worry about anything getting, ugh, getting stuck in there. Hey man, so this is a message to you, uh, Mr. Cool Guy, who doesn't uh, use safety equipment. That was me, probably three months ago. I was like, ah, I use safety glasses every now and then, but uh, I was home alone one day, working on the truck, and using the grinder, and it kicked back and hit me right in the chin. Gashed my chin open, had to get seven stitches. Um, at home by myself, I live probably 30 minutes to the closest town, hospital. So it could have been really bad if it would have just gone slightly to the left and hit my neck. I uh, probably wouldn't have made it. So definitely wear a face shield. You're supposed to wear glasses too, but I don't know. At least I got a face shield on. So wear your freaking face shield, dude. Because the one time you think it won't happen is when it happens. And you wish you would have done it. Because I literally had it on and I took it off to do something just real quick. And it shot back and hit me in the face. And yeah, it was bad. So I'll insert a picture of it just for you guys that would like to see. But uh, if not, fast forward a little bit. But anyways, back to the fast forward of me working. All right, so it's important to get, if you're making hinges, you want them to be the same angle because if they're not, the door won't open on the same arc on both sides and it'll bind and be hard to open. So do your best to get them the same angle. Um, another tip or trick I learned. Also, probably what I could do now that I got my air compressor over here, I could probably just drill these lug nuts out and not have to grind this down because that was a pain in the took us when I was doing that. So actually, now that I think about it, let me go drill these bad boys out instead of grinding these down. All right, so I skipped the whole drilling part because let's just be honest, drilling holes is boring and no one really cares about that. But I got all four hinges cut bent and lug nuts drilled out so now they fit nice and just like so um so the next step now is to cut these doors so what i like to do what i did on the top and what seems to work best is cut the actual spot where the hinge is going to go and then weld on your hinge. So that way your door, in theory, should close back to how it is, how you see it now, instead of trying to line everything back up. And it's what I should have done to begin with on this one, but I didn't. And it got a little lopsided. And actually, because this is a cylinder and you cut it open, it's under tension like this. So when you cut it open, it wants to spring open. 
So I tried to, my best to bend it back, but I think what I ended up doing was just flattening the middle piece and didn't really get it back to original shape. So I've got a gap here and a gap up top. And that is why you also want to run a slab piece of metal on the edge to give it that uh, closing, I don't know, effect, just so it closes and you don't got a big gap everywhere. But I did this on the bottom and on the top and uh well obviously i got that smoker up on the workbench and so i can work on it easier i don't gotta bend down it's a little cold here in florida it's like 50 something and my knees start hurting when it gets cold out so <sighs> that's why it's up here so i'm not sure which one i want to do first but I think it's going to be this one. And I may actually move this down some because if you look, if this opens up all the way, it's gonna hit here before it actually opens up all the way, which really won't be a big deal, but I don't know. I guess I wanna utilize this best I can and moving it down an inch or two won't be that big deal so this what i'm gonna do now is get this line cut and slam on those uh homemade hinges there let's see what happens actually just kidding the warden just got home so time for me to go inside but hopefully this weekend i'll be able to get some more on it done and uh i'll take you along the journey with me See you tomorrow. All right, so it's the following day, and I went ahead, got some cardboard out, and pretty much made a design to cover up this hole here. Uh, it should work for both sides, so I went ahead and cut it out of cardboard, then I cut it out of some eighth inch metal. And now the fun part's gonna be shaping this to this curve. My plan of attack is, I guess, just tack the centers where I've got it pre-marked on my, whatever this is, mold or, I don't know, the copy, but I marked some lines on it on the tank and I marked the same spot on the metal. So in theory, as long as I line the lines up, should bend around or close enough to hammer it into place and weld it on. up the bottom side here uh, but yeah it should work and I'm gonna do the other side off camera and figure out what's next all right so I got both tack panels on fully welded banged into place had a couple little hiccups and overlaps but it all worked out and it should work just fine um, next step I'm gonna do is now the door here um i am think i'm just gonna do one hinge this time right here in the center and have it 
open towards me. Uh, I thought about doing like a double hinge back to back, um, pointing different directions. So one like that and one like that, yeah, but butted up close to each other. But I don't think I want to open it up. So if I want to have this door fully opened to get the most amount of air through it, I don't want to have to somehow prop it up. So I think I'm going to open sideways. And I think for this, I'm just going to use one single hinge just uh, for simplicity. And this really isn't heavy. Well, shouldn't be. So I think one should do it, but I guess we'll find out. some sort of latch system to uh, hold it closed but so far it works pretty good looks like it drooped a little bit just probably because I didn't have this pin all the way down in the groove but there is my firebox I'm probably going to come through here and cut out some of this just to get the uh, most amount of flow I can through there. I'm going to come through and clean up all these edges and I'm probably going to do some sort of edge like I did on those. I may do it on this. I'm not too sure how I may do it. Probably not now that I think about it. Now I say it out loud. I probably won't. But uh, now that this is done, I'm going to, oh boy, I just forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah, clean up those and then I'm going to cut this one next. And then after that, I'm going to work on the grates. I got some angle iron here for the tray for the grates inside. I'm going to have at least one on the bottom. I may do a second row there and I'm going to do another one probably right in here to the very top. Just some sort of tray here to where I can put a uh, some sort of tinfoil pan on there. But that is going to do it for this video. I'm sure it's pretty long. So I hope you stick around for the next one when I try and get this thing finished up. Appreciate y'all watching. Have a good one.